Uh, welcome back to the channel guys um, today we're going to talk about the PL18 EV or the Paladin 18 EV for the construction version of the PL18 radio made by Flysky and uh, this is made specifically for construction vehicles, RC construction vehicles, excavators, bulldozers, not necessarily construction, but surface vehicles, to be honest, yeah, surface vehicles. And uh, it's a really, really powerful radio. We're gonna talk about some features, physical features of it, the aesthetics of the looks, and then we're gonna dive into the software, just some basic software rundown. It's a powerful radio. It can use for anything surface, so cars, trucks, um, boats, um, anything surface can be used for. Um, at the moment, um, I use it for all my construction vehicles. All my construction vehicles are linked to this radio. I think that's it's my bulldozer, my excavator, king hauler, um, my forklift and the King Ola, um trailer, that's the low boy, it's all, all linked, this radio. So without any ado, let's get into it. Now, the first thing we're gonna talk about is um, pouring up the radio, turning on the radio and Turning this radio on is, <laughs> is both awesome and fun. So to power on the radio on, we press and hold these two buttons at the same time for about two seconds. And maybe you can see it's illuminated. We're gonna talk about the lights shortly. But yep, that's how it turns on. Press and hold, turn it off. <laughs> now we will talk about all these features so you can turn that sound off and the system sounds touch sounds can turn those off if you don't want to so yeah point up the radio press on all the two power buttons at the bottom and that's typical fly sky style and that's just turning the radio on now we're going to talk about um the appearance now this is fairly weight uh, about i'd say about half pounds or less than that not too heavy but it gives that nice premium feel of a radio you know that when you have this radio in the hands it feels it's premium um, everything on it just looks premium this is aluminium so this bit around it is aluminium um, this is a stand I put it to stand up this is also another stand at the back that it sits on and it's also a carrier that you can just hold to carry and that is also an aluminium plate as well um, that is the receiver or the antenna module sorry yes that's the antenna module and there's also something interesting about this radio that i'll be demonstrating earlier i'm not going to say anything yet but i'm going to demonstrate something about this radio earlier and yeah, the design is really good. These are the Bluetooth, so the Bluetooth module there. I think you just plug that in. Plug some Bluetooth module like. This is where it charges. Let me just get up. So that's the USB charging port and that's the trainer port. And this has nice grips as well. If you have the premium version, you would get additional grips. But these grips are, are amazing. I prefer these ones because I have got fairly small hands. So yeah, that's the that's the that's the appearance. It's really good, nice flat matte black. Then we're gonna talk about the display, quality and the brightness. Now, as you can see, I've locked the screen, so I can't touch anything. So, because this is actually one of my just. So my, my units, the King Allah. We're going to talk about the display. 
and the brightness. Just turn it all. That's it. So the display is actually is a really good display. It's, it's really it, it's 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 actually it's proper bright as well. At the moment, I've turned it down. So let's go into display. At the moment, the brightness is at fifty percent. And it's a hundred percent. It is proper bright. But as with any device, the brighter the screen, the shorter the battery life la sort of shorter the battery life span. Did I stutter? Being in your playtime. So what I do I just try to keep mine at fifty percent max but this play is really good the touch is a bit too sensitive for me it's extremely sensitive sometimes you will be in menus you want to touch something i want to scroll and it's just accidental it goes into a menu like that but apart from that it is beautiful it has vibration as well which we, which we will be talking about soon now Channels. So this is, as I mentioned earlier, this is a PL18 EV. So this has 18 channels. So it's 18 channels, and those 18 channels include switches, buttons, um, levers, joysticks, and knobs. Knobs. So that boom, boom, that's the vibration you're hearing. Yeah, so those 18 channels includes all those functions, all those key, key, key functions and buttons as well. So there's also buttons and the joysticks. You can use these to do whatever that you choose. And you probably see me flicking this switch and see the modules are sort of changing. Uh, we'll be talking about that soon. Yep, sweet new feature about this radio. And uh, lights. So at the moment, the joysticks, the inside bit there, and the back is illuminated, so this flashes. So it flashes when the battery is at good, good health. Um, if you should leave the radio to idle, the light changes color from blue. So when you're using it, it's blue, but when it's idling, it goes from blue, purple, green, and when the battery is um, about to die a week, it goes red. So it actually changes color. I'm not sure you're, it's gonna see that now. So I'm gonna leave the radio on, so you might see it during the video. But the lights are very beautiful. Wish I could turn them off to save some power, but you can't, but it is, they're very pretty. Very beautiful lights. Yes, as you can see, it's now changed color. You can see it was so. This is now turquoise. It's not blue, so it's turquoise. It was in green, so it's off. So it's purple. Deep purple. Red iPhone 14 <laughs> Pro Max, <laughs> and that is yellow. And see what colors come up next. That's turquoise. And as soon as you touch it, it goes back to blue. So blue means play mode. Yep, blue means play mode. Now let's talk about binding. Bind settings. So it uses a classic receiver, which these receivers are the FT10, FG, FT10, um, the, the, the FT series. Yep, the FT series and the the FG series, so those are the older style Binding. models. It also uses the go back to that. Let me switch to a new model. A 
I'm gonna, I'm after rebuying my lorry. <laughs> Alright, so it also uses these, which is the FT8 RB Fly Sky and it uses the newer one FGR. So these are the are these are the brand new receivers from Fly Sky. And these these are the same technology. They are both the same technology. So these receivers are both the same technology. As you can see the FDH AFDH3. But this one is the advanced receiver as Fly Sky says. This is the advanced one, this is not so advanced. Um, this one is easily paired, easily bind, and can be easily updated. Um, to use this one with the radio, there's you have to update it first on the on the on the, on the laptop on the computer then you can bind it. You can't just bind it. If you buy it brand new in the case and try to bind it with the radio, you won't bind. It has to be updated first. This one, you just buy it, open it, bind, or update, or bind, and then use. And binding is inside the menu. So the focus, so touch menu. Receiver setup inside the receiver setup. Let me just increase the brightness. So let me increase the brightness a bit. For demonstration purposes. Yeah, so receiver setup. Inside the receiver setup, there is a whole bunch of cool features. You got a receiver update about your receiver, midpoint, offset, IBUS. You can configure the receiver, PM, PVMW converter. You have low voltage alarm, low voltage signal, voice, frequency. You can set your server frequency from here. Let me. Do, do, do. Yep. So you can set your server frequency. Digital, analog, or custom. You have your range test, fail safe, custom port, protocol, and you got your binding setting. So in binding, when binding FG12B or FTR8B, you'd use a routine 18 channel, which is the for the newer servers, which was for these two servers, receivers, sorry, for these two new receivers. And you can do multiple receiver binding, or it can be single receiver binding. So you can bind two receivers at the same time. For example, if you wanted to bind this eight channel and this twelve channel to get a comp to get an additional eighteen channels, you can bind both receivers together. And that's what I've done with my King Aller. I've bind the receiver for the King Aller and the receiver for the for the low boy together. And it controls the low boy, the, the lift, or the boom. <laughs> Just call it the ramp here. It controls the ramp. So this controls the ramp. And the, and, and, the, and the low boy without having to switch models. Or having a separate um, radio for that. Which is really good. So you, And if you did want to receive a bind, you select multiple receivers. You bind the first one, and then if the first one, so for example, this is this is a 12 channel. You would bind the primary up to 12, and then the secondary, if this was eight channel, you would start that from channel, let me see that for you, channel 13. So you would start the second receiver from channel 13, and just touch bind. Binding. Um, that's how it is. And that, that's how it binds. That's how you bind both receivers together. You can also get telemetry on both receivers as well. And it can show you the temperature or voltage or whatever sensor you have plugged in at the time. And that is binding. So the next. We're going to talk about model combination.
which is another sweet aspects of this radio now model combination is to be the number one or one of the best features of this radio model combinations the next best feature we talk about so if is model conditions but a model combination is one of the best features of this radio um, for model combination you would access menu go to models go to model combination and if you've got multiple models um, binding on the radio you can combine all of them together and use a switch like this one to flick to switch between models so for example you can see the Kinola, the bulldozer truck lift and the excavator they're all bind together and this is the new model i've just created fly sky 5 so i want to combine that with all of these five models but well, first i'll show you what it looks like first so at the moment i've got the four models the king ala so the king ala and then i can flick a switch and get a bulldozer sorry for the tank image but at the moment last guy hasn't give us a bulldozer video a bulldozer pick yet so it's a tank because bulldozers are basically tanks anyways click a switch that's the forklift and that's the excavator and it starts back over from the king order now if i wanted to add a fifth model to the switch all i need to do is settings option settings models model combination touch fly sky five arcs combine mod, combine model yes okay simple as that back out back out back out flick so we're at number four model so it shows you the number the model so you can see the receiver is not bound so as soon as the receiver is not active it doesn't pick up the receiver so that's why the x is there this is the model number four his name is an excavator sensor screen and then model number five just like that then press it down and it starts back over or model number five model number six four model number three two one and it switches instantly between models instantly between models there's no lag or anything which i'll be demonstrating shortly with all the models i'm going to demonstrate the bulldozer the forklifts the excavator the king Ola, and the and the receiver binding multiple receiver binding function how it works with the tail lift on the low boy but the model the model combination is good and the, the display as well as I, did, I mentioned i didn't touch on this aspect about the display but it's full touch screen i have noticed already but the display is really good so it shows you the sensors the models you can see right here is your trims the trims and these are just the four main servers display that you use so on the king Allah, you've got a fifth wheel so this button controls my fifth wheel and it's also timed um that's my throttle steering and lights and the King Ola is a Tamiya, so you know that that means lights. If you know the King Ola, I'm running the MFC01 because the King Ola is an American, and MFC01 is for American trucks, which is highly acceptable. And that is about the combination. Once you've got more than one models um, paired up to your radio, we do recommend using model combination. It is slick, extremely slick. Switching between models is just really fast. If You've got just one radio you've got all the units and, and you've all, all your equipments out all you need to do is just flick a switch um the receivers have already programmed for model switching so once you switch a model it won't like turn off and go into a state of inactivity or dead and then you have to go and restart the model or turn it off and turn it on no once you switch between it it just restarts so that's all the units so as you can see here you can see the king Allah. Excavator, the forklift, and the bulldozer. Now, it's on the King Allah. And what happens when I flick from the King Allah to the bulldozer? 
I got a bulldozer. If I switch between forklift. Mm. Got the forklift. Switch to the excavator. Mm. I got an excavator. The excavator is in work mode, so I switch between M move mode. Look what happens. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about is model conditions so i'm gonna talk about this bad boy here conditions now conditions is moods basically it gives you the option to work on two modes i think my battery is charged smart battery is charged i'm going bashing tomorrow yes yeah, so a condition gives you two different modes to work with you've got your work mode and you've got your move mode now this is mainly for excavators cranes um anything that has like more than i would say do, 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 do. well anything actually <laughs> stop that anything actually but for me anything that has more than eight eight channels i, I would just use like work mode and a move mode now the excavator is one of those vehicles so your excavator has it has your big arms the small arms the trucks and stuff like that and when you're not necessarily using an excavator you're not moving too much now you can use these along with the excavator to move it but i use a trap mixing which we'll be talking about shortly but i use a trap mixing and i prefer to use just one stick to drive the excavator um if i'm working and i need to move i then i then i would use these levers on the side they are also spring spring loaded i use these levers but most of the time when you're using an excavator you just stay one place and you just operate in the arms and you're spinning turntable and you're just digging you're not really doing the move so for the excavator i've got two moods which are my conditions two conditions you've got the work conditions and you've got the move and this is what it looks like so condition one is your move mode and condition two is your work mode now this works is it gives you the option to switch between moves as mentioned so for example let's go back as it shows now it shows i'm in the move mode so and see when I move the joystick, it goes forward, reverse, that's left and that's right. And when I switch to that's this one, this button, to work mode, look what happens to this joystick now. It switches to work mode. So best big arm, platform turn, mid arm, and that's pocket. It no longer operates the track because I'm now in work mode. I'm only operating the arms, turntable, and I'm only digging. Now I'm working. If I want to move, press that button again and it switches back over to move mode. Or if I want to move, I can actually have already mix these buttons. So I've set them up so I've mixed these. If I need to move like slight move or small moves, then I can move whichever wheels on these sides these two levers and that is conditions it gives you the option to switch between two different work functions so work modes if you prefer to use this to drive the trucks and also to dig then condition would be the best thing so if you prefer to use the levers for digging and driving then conditions would be good if you want if you don't like to use this to drive the trucks and you just want these to you want to use these to digs then you can always program these to, use to drive 
but that's how I use my work mode. And I will demonstrate that shortly with my excavator. Tunnel sign is the main thing that we're going to use and you will be using on this radio, function assign. Because that's where you assign all your channels, control the channels, reverse the channels. You can actually use this to reverse, but you can use function assign also to reverse the channels, set your switches up. It does do everything from function assign. And function assign work together with your display servers, which I'll be touching in shortly. So a function assign, so for example, you just bound us. Are you just setting up a model? For example, setting up a model. And at the moment we are in move mode. So that's fly sky model five. So go function assign. Mm -hmm. So let me just start run that over again. So to set up a model, you go function assigned. Right, so you models select model Mark. let's go model six yeah select model six so we're gonna set model six up now go back to model six function assigned we got left track right track platform turn hydraulic pump we got big arm small arm bucket lamps this is basic stuff for an excavator now we want, say for example, you want to assign different channels on the radio set it. You go function, track, you go control. And what this does, so for channel one, that is gonna be a left track. Control is the, the lever or the knob or the button you want to use to control. Um, channel one. So you want to use, so for example, I want to use this to control channel one, which would be the left track. Then I would find this on the radio, which is going to be jumper three. Go back, and as you can see, jumper three now control the left track. If I want to use the right track to control this lever, then I would use jumper two. And as you can see, jumper two now controls right track. To get a further proof of this, you go server display servers, and then you can see your left track. Don't worry about the small arm. Your left track is now controlled by that, and your right track is now controlled by that. And that brings us to display servers. So display servers basically shows you all the servers are all the channels actually so it shows you the full 18 channels on one screen and what is actually operating those 18 channels which leave out buttons switches knobs is using up those 18 channels and the display server on your function assign works together when once you assign a function to a switch a knob or a lever i will i I recommend that you switch over to display servers to see what that mom is doing. If it needs reversing or, is, or doesn't need reversing, then you can do that from. And speaking of reversing, you can reverse a channel. So for example, I wanted to reverse jumper three. You can reverse a channel from function assigned, just like that. Go back to display servers. I can see it's now reversed or if you want to reverse it you go directly into reverse touch reverse and that's it it's been reversed just like that and reverse is just only for reverse then we've got our trims and sub trims so as we are in the rc world we know what this is already your trim means your big trimmings for example if you have a tummy arch lorry that needs trimming it's always good to trim your vehicle physically first trim it physically more than digitally that way you've got a better steering angle a better steering if you trim it physically than digitally when you trim it digitally it basically reduces your turning radius or your travel sorry your steering travel but trimming it just basically showing you all the trims so these are trims 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 
trims trims so all these are trims and these can be assigned to any of these levers each individual trim and to do that you do, you do that to assign a trim you do that in function assign so for example the left track control if you want to assign a trim for the left track you can either use this which is trim 1 trim 7 trim 3 trim 5 trim 4 trim 8 whichever trims um, floats your boat or you can use a knob so you can touch that knob VRA, go back, go back, display servers to see what that knobs does. I can go back to the display screen. Uh, you can see what happens. Let me see. It basically trims it. So that's what a trimming does and your sub trim is just where you go to fine tune your trimming so for example left track your percentage and it does it by one increments of one and that's what your sub trim does if you need that fine tune of your channels and sensors sensors is if you have when you buy these receivers, you get a uh, voltage sensor in each pack. Let's open this. This one is brand new, hasn't opened yet. So let's try and open this one. So for every one of these receivers you buy from Fly Sky, you get a voltage a volt sensor. And that you see a volt sensor, and that just plugs in negative, negative, positive, positive, negative, white is positive black is negative and it plugs that straight into your battery your battery input port and once that plugs in you go into your sensors display sensors choose your sensors first you go you would choose the receivers sensor because that one basically manages the receiver sensor which, which basically controls um, the voltage in the unit turn that on then you can choose your low voltage alarm or your high voltage alarm and then you can touch the sensor button at the top so that is also a feature that, that sensor that says sensor one so this is also a function touch that and you get access to the actual sensor menu then you can so it says tx turn on if, turn on the actual voltage um, for the unit so if the receiver was on you would have seen rx here and, it would, and this would be displayed as rx and then when you go back out to display servers instead of seeing tx voltage you would show you rx voltage and what that would do is show you the complete voltage that's leaving the system or in your battery and when it gets low that like below your minimum it would turn red so it will shows here and it would turn red so you see so that's so you would see transmitter voltage receiver voltage and then once the receiver voltage is below what you have set it it would turn red and then this light turn red all the knobs turn red the remote starts to vibrate the radio starts to vibrate and it would beep and it's annoying it is annoying and that is your sensors now the next thing we're going to touch on is power on safety yes power on safety when the radio comes stuck or when you buy a brand new and turn first turn it on if all those knobs are not in the correct position it will vibrate and comes up with like a red or a white screen with some red with all the knobs on it and it shows red and it will allow you to use the radio unless you turn the, the, the RF off or the knobs are in current position. Sorry, so I want to show you and demonstrate that now. So I turn it on. And you can see, so it's now telling me switch E, switch A, and switch G is in current position. It's going to beep like that, beep, 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 and it's not going to stop. 
because it's saying the radio is not in a safe position turn on until you move the knobs up that's that and that's it i know it's going to turn on now there's a way to bypass this and the reason why i'm showing this is because on my let's go with my Let's go back to models. Switch. On my King Arlo, this switch is set as a three position switch from the factory. Now, that being said, in settings, as I said, this radio is powerful. You can change this switch from three position to two position because I use this to control my lights. And you go into switch settings and that's gonna be switch G. So switch G is now set to two levels instead of three. So it comes like that from factory, I'll set it to two levels. When it sets to two levels and you turn the radio on, it's gonna beep with that arrow saying that the radio is unsafe and there's no way of you turning it on unless you turn the RF off um, go inside the radio and switch the switch back to three position to get it working now the way to bypass that is option into menu and you would go into back no that is a touch a bit you go into RF setup so RF setup and then at the bottom scroll down turn it again to the, you know. oh RF alarm settings and this is where you would change the settings now what you would do is set all of these to always safe always safe Always safe, always safe, always safe, always safe, always safe, always safe. Back, back, back. And what that does, it doesn't matter which direction these switches are. Once you've turned the radio on, it just turns on. It doesn't give you that beep, and then you have to turn the RF off, go into the function, turn. So basically resetting the, the switch as it comes and then setting it back again to what you wanted before so turn that off just quick demonstration and then point on and you're gonna see because all of because i've set the switch as always safe it just turns on it doesn't matter which direction the switches are in, it just turns on because it says whichever position it is, it's always safe. We have a quick rundown of the menu. So in the menu we've got our display servers, function, models, receiver setup, sensors, reverse, endpoints, trims, conditions, endpoints, sub trims, conditions, trims. We've got on the second page, oops. We've got function, rate, dual rate throttle curve channels offset channel delays pro mixes abs and that's for braking system timers logic switch rf setup and last page we've got make set sims um, system we've also got track mixing where is it should be here somewhere So track mixing I right, so you won't see um yeah so you're not gonna see track mixing on this one because this this is the king ala but if I switch to the bulldozer option and I should go to the second page it would show track mixing so trap mixing is on enables if you select when you're selecting your model so when you select your model so 
switch model, I use select model structure, and you select trucks instead of throttle and steering. If you select throttle and steering, you won't get track mixing. But if you select trucks, then that's when the track mixing, where is it? Track mixing will become enabled. And you set track mixing, just simple turn it on. Um, go to function assign, put your track, so your left track, put your left track on this knob. So put if I want to use this to control the track, so put your left knob on jumper tree or J3 back, and then put your right track on JR4. It sounds silly, which is which is this one left and right go back but that's actually how the trap mixing works once you go to display servo you can see your trap mixing is working perfectly and that's your trap mixing now I'm gonna demonstrate how trap mixing works and the condition works as well and I'm gonna show you all the models working alongside with this radio Right, I'll be right back. Yes, yeah, so one last thing I haven't touched on, I was going to touch on it, is wireless charging. Yep, so this radio has wireless charging, so the battery is here, the wireless charging, charging bit is here. Premium version, you will get the wireless charging with it. So I'm gonna use my P20 Pro, P30 Pro, to just demonstrate that for you. So in battery settings, I go battery, and it's already, you can see that reverse wireless charging, it's turned on. So I'll turn that on, close the screen. I'm gonna put this here, just to get a bit of leverage so it doesn't lift up, put that on that. That's it. I say, yeah, reverse wireless charging. I think it charges at 5 watt. Reverse wireless charging. It does charge at 5 watt, but it charges a bit slow, but yeah, it, it works. It works. Let's see, yeah, it is charging wirelessly. Using my phone, so if I take the phone off. It goes away, I put the phone on. Oops, if I can find it back. It comes back on. This is an example of um, how it looks when the multiple receivers are bind together. So there are settings, so there bind settings. It says channel one, channel 13. So Channel secondary channel starts from channel 13 and the primary channel starts from channel 1 and it says bind, receiver bind counted, counted. And how it looks with the servers on. Let me turn this down. How it looks with the receiver the sensors as I mentioned earlier, so you can see the RX voltage and the transmitter voltage here, which is very good. Now, how this works, oh, you can see this controls the lorry. My steering. This controls my lights. So flip down, so switch it to two channels, um, two levels because of this. Easy. Let's push it down, easy. If it was on a three, um, three channel mode, we'd have to push it down and up, down and up, down and up, which is not really good. So just push it two channels and two levels. I mean, yeah. one flick to the right. Yep. And this controls now because it's multi receiver bind, there's also another receiver, oh, and it's the second gen, 
so you can see that's the second gen receiver look up to a um, ESC that hooks up to where is it? a motor spin the drive that hooks up Oh, that's okay. <laughs> to my ramps. Now I haven't received the legs yet. The automated legs. But when I get that, that will also be hooked up to a second receipt, a second ESC. And on the radio, I'll put this here. This controls. Okay. I think the battery is dying. Yeah. And these switches controls the light. So this one controls the light and the lorry, so this one, this one controls the light and the lorry, this one, so I need to put these outside a proper demonstration.